This video is going to explain the three uh, settings for triggering on this uh, Teledyne LaCroix HDL4104MS oscilloscope. There are three choices of triggering, auto, normal, and single, and this is going to explain the differences between them. So first of all, if we go over to this function generator, we're outputting an oscilloscope, it's at three kilohertz. This controls the output, so it's either zero volts or it's the sine wave. Triggering is the operation of an oscilloscope where it begins at some trigger point, which on this screen is designated by this triangle right here. And that, this triangle, which I can move, I'll show you it moving left and right, uh, is, uh, shows where it chooses the voltage and starts to trigger. Now, if it's triggering properly, then this sweep is actually being replaced many, many times per second. This is not one trace showing on the screen. It's new data multiple times per second. And it looks the same because the voltage and slope at which it chooses to trigger is exactly the same each sweep. We can prove that by me changing the frequency to demonstrate, if you can just show the screen, that this is new data. Uh, this data is being replaced very frequently uh, in time. This point here shows the voltage at which the triggering is happening. I can move that using the level control. And as I move it upwards, you notice that the voltage at which it triggers has shifted because it's a different voltage that it's triggering at. So as I move it up, it's moving very slightly because that is now the voltage that it's triggering at. In this mode called auto, when I get above any one of the, allowed, the existing voltages, what will happen is that it won't be able to find a voltage to trigger at. And in the auto mode, it will continue randomly triggering, looking for a voltage to trigger at. And there it is, it's just triggering randomly. So we know it's triggering, and if I change the oscilloscope screen, uh, I, I'm sorry, if I change the input frequency in real time, we're seeing it change. That is the auto mode. Let's go back to triggered at zero, and now select the normal mode. What normal mode, how normal mode differs from auto is it's exactly the same when it's triggering. But when it's not triggering, it does not search for a random time to trigger on. So if we change the level, we are still triggering. Everything happens the same way. The value changes, the phase is shifting because we're, we're picking a different point for triggering. But when we get above a value for triggering, it, it no longer triggers. And in the bottom, it says waiting for trigger. And the proof of this is that if I change the frequency over here, which I'm doing, nothing happens here. So we are fixed. If I come back, it'll start to trigger again. And it doesn't say waiting for triggering anymore. And you can see the phase shifting very slightly. The blinking light means that it is successfully uh, searching for new trigger points. I went above and it says it's ready, but it's not blinking, so it's not triggered. Okay, that leaves us one more setting, and that setting is single. Now, in the single mode, we're gonna turn off the output here at the, uh, at, at the regal, so there's no output. And we're gonna change the trigger level somewhere here. Now, this is still showing the old data because what's coming out of the regal now is just a flat line. Single says that it will take one shot and uh, I have to turn the, and since it's going to trigger on this voltage and the output from the regal is zero, it hasn't seen this voltage yet, so it hasn't triggered. I press the output and we get that trigger point, which we did before, and this much of the screen. Now, if we want to see more of it, I can move that trigger point to the left by changing this horizontal position. That is the triggering point of the screen. It isn't actually triggering from the left side, it's triggering from where that triangle is. There was a very slight interruption there. So uh, we're going to do it again where we arm it. It's called arming the trigger. We arm the trigger 
the trigger point is above zero, so it hasn't triggered. Now you won't see me press the button, but I'm reaching over to turn on the sinusoidal output from the function generator, and it shot one time from this point to the end of the screen. Again, if I change the frequency, which I just did, nothing changes. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start single again, and I'm going to, oops, actually, uh, I'm gonna start single again, and now I'm gonna hit the output again, uh, I thought I had changed the frequency. Uh, changing the frequency, turning that out, turning that on, and it should now change. Yep, I changed the frequency to one kilohertz, and I got a different run that time. So that uh, explains uh, everything, and it stopped. Nothing's lit, nothing's blinking, nothing's triggering. And it doesn't say it's waiting for trigger because uh, it's not in any mode that would be waiting for trigger. Uh, so that is a summary of how triggering works on this oscilloscope and other oscilloscopes. Okay, we're going to say a little bit more now about uh, different triggering modes. This button, this setup button, brings up a menu which gives you more choices and more control over triggering. All we talked about so far was the voltage level at which the triggering was selected. But you'll notice that there are two edges, two slopes, at which the same voltage occurs. So the way to do that is choose the mode for edge and then you can choose a positive or the negative going. So if I select the negative going, there's gonna be a movement toward to the negative edge, which almost looks like a, a, a 180 degrees, but it's not quite 180 degrees. But it chooses the negative going edge. See, that's the negative going edge and now that's the positive going edge. So uh, where it's triggering, I'm sorry, right there and right there same voltage across those two points okay there's some more things that we can do we can choose filters if it's a noisy si signal it might have trouble finding these points so you can put a low frequency reject or a high frequency reject to help get a cleaner signal to do that and also you might notice that as we change the level the triggering level and this is moving which we expect that also shows up in this box so you can set the uh, trigger level by entering numbers if you want to do that. Now there is another important feature called external triggering. So, we, uh, well, before we do that, right now we were using channel one for the signal and we're, and we're obviously triggering on channel one, but what if you have multiple signals coming in one, two, three, and four? You have to tell it which one of those you want to trigger on so you can select which channel is the one that's causing the trigger and it has to be showing on this scope in order to do that, as far as I know. Uh, but there, there, is, there are some other modes uh, to do, notably external triggering. So external triggering, if you select external triggering, it triggers on a signal that comes out of the sink, which is a square wave, and if that goes into the external, that, that does the triggering. So let's look at what that really looks like. We took the sink out, and we put it in channel two, so you can actually see that there's a square wave being generated that corresponds exactly to the trigger points. And that is a cleaner signal that the oscilloscope has an easier time interpreting in case it's a uh, difficult signal to trigger on. Uh, so that's external triggering. And there is one more mode uh, for triggering, and that is line uh, triggering. So if you choose line, which may not work so well here, we'll see what happens. That means that whatever you're doing is synced to 60 hertz, the line frequency, but we're not. So it, it can't trigger on the line frequency because we don't have any relationship to that 60 hertz. So we go back to channel one, uh, channels, channel one, everything is good, and, uh, and we have a nice clean signal. We can turn off channel two and see our sine wave. We're in the auto mode, so ch changing, whoops, that's changing the, uh, the, the, the voltage of it and now we're changing the frequency. Okay, that's everything uh, as an introduction to uh, triggering on this oscilloscope and uh, virtually all other oscilloscopes.